We are not looking for black people to be very intelligent. We don't look for black intelligence. We look for black strength, we look for black speed, we look for black entertainment, but we don't necessarily look for black intelligence. What up guys, I am Sara Garvey and welcome back to Class Is In Session with me, myself, Sara Garvey. Now, I know you see the board. Blacks are low IQ. That's what we're taught. Black people are good sportsmen. They are good entertainers. They are sometimes criminals. And they're not very intelligent. They're a little bit low IQ. We can kind of switch on all of our devices and we can see black people are kind of portrayed or portray themselves a lot of the time as low IQ individuals. But just how realistic is that statement? We're going to go into it. So today we're going to challenge the idea as to whether blacks are low IQ. Now, what I first want to do is to kind of let people understand that black intelligence isn't looked for. Okay, first of all, we have to understand that we are bias towards black intelligence. We don't look for black intelligence. And we're going to get on to one of the most, I guess, viewed things on Joe Rogan, which was Terence Howard's, um, let's say, intellectual breakdown of the stuff that he says he found and patented and stuff like that. And the reasons why people were and are so skeptical about what Terence Howard has found, um, it's because there is a history. OK, there is a history of thinking that black people are low IQ. What do I mean? So if we go back to the 600s, OK, and Arabs invaded North Africa in 642 AD. When they invaded Africa in 642 AD, they already had the Africans conquered, okay? And a conquered people, you don't look for their intelligence. What you do is that you, you actually uh, proclaim how much more intelligent you are if you conquer a people because obviously they can't be as intelligent as you because you conquered them, okay? So Arab Muslims in 600s were not looking for Africans to be intelligent. Of course, they're not intelligent. If we fast forward to the 1400s, when I've spoken about um, when Goncalves went to West Africa and found that the Muslim Arabs already had the black people enslaved, and he took some of those slaves to Portugal, well, of course, black people aren't intelligent. They're just a bit slow and dumb, and they're used for labor, okay? So from the 600s to the 1400s and beyond into today right now, we are not looking for black people to be very intelligent. We don't look for black intelligence. We look for black strength. We look for black speed. We look for black entertainment. But we don't necessarily look for black intelligence. But, again, how real is that? We have to go back. Let's go back into antiquity. So there is a man by the name of Herodotus. He is known as the father of history the father of history. He is a Greek man. And he wrote a book called The Histories, The Histories of the World, where he traveled all over the world and he wrote down the histories of the people. Now, what did he say about the ancient Egyptians that makes, we, makes us understand that blacks are not low IQ? For it is plain to see that the Colchians are Egyptians. And what I say, I myself noted before I had heard it from the others. When it occurred to me, I inquired of both peoples, and the Colchians remembered the Egyptians better than the Egyptians remembered the Colchians. The Egyptians said that they considered the Colchians part of Sesostris' army. I myself guessed it, partly because they are dark-skinned and woolly-haired. So that's what the father of history said about the Colchians, and the Egyptians. They were obviously of the same people because they were what? Dark-skinned and woolly-haired. Now we are told that the Egyptians were not dark-skinned and woolly-haired. We are told the Egyptians were white-skinned and all of the, um, let's say, the films and all the paraphernalia actually 
show us that the Egyptians were not dark-skinned and woolly-haired, but this man lived in the 5th century. The 5th century, which is closer to the time of when the Egyptians were ruling, and he himself said, yes, they were dark-skinned and woolly-haired. So let's go back into history again. We're going to go to Diodorus, Diodorus of Sicily of the 1st century. He himself also stated that the Egyptians were black. Okay, now I want people to understand something. This is not me saying this. This is people closer to the time saying this. These are historians, European historians, saying this stuff. This is not just me doing some Afrocentric superiority type thing that people are probably going to say in the comment section anyway. But this is not me. Your problem isn't with me. Your problem is with them. The people that lived closer to the time, I'm just quoting them. Okay, so if we continue on into history, we will find that there is a man by the name of Champillion Fijek. Champillion Fijek. I think that's how you spell it. Champillion Fijek. Now, Champillion Fijek was an archaeologist. He was a French archaeologist who found that the Egyptians, when he was digging them up, kept on being people of black skin and woolly hair. And to the point, which is actually quite funny to me, to the point that he had to contradict himself. You see, when you have a psychology that says blacks are low IQ, when you are faced with something that does not show that, okay, you will contradict yourself. You will look very stupid because what you're trying to do now is you're trying to fit a square peg into this round hole and you can't fit it in. So what you're going to do is you're going to end up looking quite stupid. That's exactly what Champillion Fijaic actually looks like as a quote unquote archaeologist who everyone took the word of. What did he actually say? Finally, after stating that black skin and woolly hair do not suffice to characterize a Negro race, Champillion Fijaic contradicts himself 36 lines later by writing frizzy woolly hair is the true characteristic of the Negro race. He only took a few lines to contradict himself. And this is what we find, again, because people are not looking for black intelligence. We're not looking for that, guys, which is why we don't find it. If I was to ask you, who is the most intelligent child in the world? People generally wouldn't know. But who is it? It's actually a Nigerian. It's a Nigerian boy by the name of Joshua Beckford. Joshua Beckford is known as the smartest child in the world. So the smartest child in the world is a Nigerian. Why do you not know that? Because you're not looking for black intelligence. You're looking for black strength. You're looking for black power. You're looking for black uh, quickness. You're looking for black entertainment, but you're not looking for black intelligence. Uh, so if we go back again into the history of the world, what we will find is a man by the name of Count Constantine de Volney. What did Count Constantine de Volney have to say about black intelligence? Count Constantine de Volney, during a, a trip to Egypt in seven, from eight, 1783 to 1785, said this, and I quote, he says, on seeing that head, what head? The Sphinx of Giza. Typically Negro in all its features, I remembered the remarkable passage of Herodotus. The ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. Just to think that this race of black men today are slaves and the object of scorn, the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. What would motivate him to say this phrase, typically Negro in all its features? Could it be perhaps this? This was a, an artist's conception, uh, Vivant Dinan, who accompanied Napoleon's army, 1798, this is his 
artist's conception of the Sphinx of Giza before what happened? Before the lips and the nose were shot off by Napoleon's troops. That is verifiable because Dinan was an eyewitness to those lips and nose, nose that li the lips and noses, nose being shot off by the soldiers. Why did they do it? We cannot climb into their hearts in the 21st century and figure this out, to mind the entrails of frogs and try to figure out why they did it. That's between them and, and God. So if we go down the list of people who actually thought black people were intelligent, we have Herodotus, we have Champillion, uh, we have Diodorus, uh, now we have another uh, French person, we have Count Constantine de Volney, and who else? Uh, when we go back to the, um, the first literature that is taken as the first literature of Greece or Europe in general, it's called the Iliad and the Odyssey. There are two pieces, the Iliad and the Odyssey, written by a man by the name of Homer. And Homer, in that piece of literature, said the exact same thing that Herodotus did, okay? So black intelligence has always been there. So why do we not know that black intelligence exists? The reason why we don't know that black intelligence exists is because we don't know what genetic diversity is, okay? So genetic diversity is basically this. In Africa, which is the birthplace of human civilization, regardless of what people want to believe, okay, is a birthplace of human civilization, we have the dumbest people, the smartest people, the tallest people who are from the Watusi tribe, I believe, the shortest people who are from the Twa. We have the people who run the fastest in the world of African genetics. We have the people who run the furthest from African genetics. We have people with the tightest curls in their hair in Africa. We have people with straight hair in Africa. We have the whitest people. They're called albinos in Africa. We have the blackest people in Africa. They're called, uh, I don't know, they're from places like South Sudan and places like that. In Africa, you'll find the people with the most um, fat on them, okay? The, the fattest people with the most muscle also in Africa. You'll find the skinniest people in Africa. This is what is known as genetic diversity. Africa has the most genetic diversity anywhere on the whole planet Earth, which means you can find everything in Africa, absolutely everything. It is a large continent that can fit the USA three and a bit times, three and a half times inside of it, okay? That's how huge Africa is. You will find everything there, okay? And that is the birthplace of humanity for both you and I. You'll find black people in Africa doing stuff like this. Now that type of stuff is actually reserved for gymnasts who have trained, okay, who have trained for years, whereas this tribe just do that just normally, okay, because of genetic diversity you will find everything in Africa. Now if we, if we fast forward, Okay, let's fast forward to the Joe Rogan experience. Let's fast forward to Terence Howard. Terence Howard has been on the Joe Rogan experience twice now. And the first time that he was on the Joe Rogan experience, um, people rubbished some of his ideas, right? Because clearly, black people are low IQ, right? <laughs> black people are low IQ. Um, but second time he's been on there now, there, he was on there with a man by the name of Eric Wiseman and Eric Wiseman liked some of his some of his ideas and you know rubbished others. But the point I'm trying to make is that black intelligence isn't looked for. Black intelligence isn't sought out. So black people being intelligent are treated generally when they show their intelligence like Terence Howard. Because that's when they said that space was a vacuum and they realized that space the vacuum is not ain't a, a vacuum. It's not a vacuum. Yeah. It's the, not the va a vacuum. Do you know how much is going on in that vacuum? It's all going yes, on. Yes, yeah. all of this stuff. I understand. So, so this is the thing, which is if you step on this thing the wrong way, everybody laughs and says, ha, 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 he doesn't understand the Michelson Morley experiment. He doesn't understand why there's no ether. And then we secretly sneak it back in in this. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Cheers. Cheers, Joe. Yeah, cheers. Man, look at these professional spherical cubes. Yeah, they're cool, right? Round ice cubes. Ah, now I can have a conversation. Oh, yeah, now. Mm. 
So, freedom. Uh, Mental freedom in a glass. So, so or in prison. It, if you're careful about it, it makes sense. If you're not careful about it, the whole thing blows up in your face. And the reason that I speak about the ether, all of the wave conjugations, all of my patents have been defining different aspects of the ether. I believe that I've defined the electric side, the plasma, the plasmic, the plasmoid side, and I believe that I've defined the magnetic side and the constitution between them. I mean, I, that's what so we have to, I want to show. I want to get to that. Let's go back to the flower. Flower oh, chain. but before you go from that other spot, okay. if you look at that picture again of those two the photons interacting, it looks like it's at the center of of what would typically be a whirlpool. This is like the very center of a whirlpool. So they've got them moving right by each other or in creating that vortice, that natural vortice. That's what they took the picture of. They look d directly down at something being uh, at two lights moving a fluid and they described how they take the picture it's so complicated jamie go back to where it was where they were explaining the um what they use here here it is here we introduce biphoton digital holography in and that in analogy to off-access digital holography where we co coincidence imaging of the superposition of an unknown state with a reference state is used to perform quantum state tomography what the fuck see but that's because <laughs> of that's because of the uncertainty and schrodinger right. all of that but if you were able because they started off trying to predict an electron cloud if and and find a little particle inside of it and couldn't predict it so all these uncertainties and probabilities came out but they were doing things on a two-dimensional basis. That's what I believe that I've figured out with the wave conjugations because they talk about the hyper... They, they show the pieces of hyperbolic space to where you don't have to go through all these unnecessary steps to reach it. I am just so happy that someone's doing something like this. I'm so happy that we can talk about it. I, th I don't think Spatial most people model. have any understanding of what's going on at the highest levels of this kind of science. Now... I can't say that I understand all of Terence Howard's uh, uh, hypotheses. I, 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 I won't say that I understand all of them. But what I do know is that he's using his intelligence or attempting to use his intelligence. And people are saying things like, oh, my God, he's crazy. He's on an acid trip, all of these kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, they kind of said the same thing about Nikola Tesla. They kind of said Nikola Tesla was crazy. And now they're using, you know, now we have a whole company named after Nikola Tesla, one of the most successful companies in the world based on his name, based on his science, based on him in general. But um, the point I'm trying to make is that black intelligence isn't looked for. And I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing um, black people shake their asses. I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing the twerking from black women. I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing the raps from black men condoning violence and, you know, championing selling drugs and championing killing other black people. I'm kind of tired of it. And if I turned on my internet connection, okay, my Wi-Fi connection, and I, you know, chose to look at something and it was a person like Terrence Howard speaking about this stuff, even though he may not have it all right, I'd prefer to watch that because at least he's trying to use his brain. At least he's trying to use a part of himself that isn't about debauchery at least he's trying to use a part of himself that isn't about showing the bad side of what black people are at least okay so shout out to terence howard um i may not know all of your theories okay but i understand that you're using your intelligence and i'm all about black people being intelligent because i'm sick of this blacks are low iq type narrative okay and if we round up and show that it was Europeans first who actually acknowledged the fact that black people are intelligent. Again, people like Herodotus, people like Champollion, people like Diodorus, people like Homer, people like Count Constantine de Volney. Okay, if we show those people of antiquity telling you that yes, actually, black people are intelligent, maybe, just maybe, the way blacks are viewed in society may start to change. I hope that helped.